Carnal de Telehit, y bueno, nos encontramos en un especial de lujo, una banda que ha tenido un exitosísimo material discográfico, Meets of the Near Future, eh, acaban de ganar el Mercury Prize, están de visita aquí, ellos son Claxon, first of all, thank you very much for me this interview. Thank you, gracias. Yeah, yeah, so is, is that your first time here in Mexico? It is, yeah, having a time of our lives, it's absolutely incredible here. What is, the, what is the thing that you like most about Mexico, of what you have seen? Maybe Mexicans, yeah. I think. <laughs> Maybe. I have. We've only got to sort of seen the city for the first time today. Oh, awesome. Um, we've sort of been playing quite a lot, so we haven't seen very much. We've got three days to have a look around now. Great people have been taking in as much as we possibly can. Cool. We've found a bulk work in this kind of exotic colours. <laughs> I've always just really like seeing like nice plants in the middle of roads. It's always nice seeing kind of a lot of green in the streets. It's yeah, nice. yeah, I know, I know, but but it's okay, it's okay. So now um, you have a really successful album, Meets of the of the Near Future. What could it be the most important thing you want to express with this album? Probably nonsense. <laughs> I think if anything also that you know you can do it you can do, you it. Can do it if you if you want to do it you can do it it doesn't you don't have to be technical music musically or anything like that if you just got to have a few ideas and go for it cool now uh golden scans it, it's a it's a great great song uh when do you realize okay this is gonna be a big one i think jamie jamie james made a demo of it and it was just done on the on like a roll and on the on, on the 303 and just had a kind of bounce to it and it just was just I realized then. <laughs> when we demoed it, I still didn't know when we were recording it, and then we took it home and I listened to it in my room for the first time like, on my own. It's the first time I've ever been able to listen to it because you don't listen to music when you're playing. Yeah. Um, and then I thought, like, wow, like, what is that? You know, there was some kind of you know, a little reef in it. And I actually got a little bit of a song on our hands. <laughs> and, and, and now you just won the, the Mercury Prize. What is the best experience of winning that kind of award? Or no, or, or you don't care. No, we, we, we really <laughs> care. We really, really care. Yeah, it's, it's just such a good feel of being prestige, I suppose. It just, it just means that people kind of recognise that we were trying to challenge pop music and, and, and see that you know we were trying to push boundaries and build everything. And, and, and that was recognised by the people. I think also winning it kind of it's resonated around the world a little bit as well. It kind of we do get asked about it, you know, in America and here, and you know, obviously it's, it's a big British reward, but I think it's. Um, it's got a lot of respect all over the world. Now, you've been playing in, in one of the best like festivals around the world. Uh, what could it be the best lesson playing with so amazing artists? That's a really good question. <laughs> What's the best lesson? When we started off at the festival, I suppose that we were by no means going to do well by the end of it. And I think by seeing other great bands, I think we got up to the point where we realized that we had to do a lot better. Mm. <laughs> I think also to be be a lesson, be nice to other bands when you're because you're playing the same festivals and you're going to see the same people every other day, and uh, it's, it's, it got really nice because it got kind of like a, it was, we played with similar bands and it became a nice scene. See some of our kind of friends now. Or and, and, and what about a festival that you went not to play but as an audience that you remember most? Um, probably Benicassim yeah. for for like a few years ago. Me and James went four or five times ago. Um, but probably actually no Reading Festival, I think, you know, went there as a child and that festival still I think has got people are going there to see music. You know, people are desperate for new music there. I think that's definitely a festival where people go to see bands rather than they go because it's a festival, which you know, Glastonbury recently has kind of got that vibe of it's just more of a kind of event and people are wandering around dressed in wacky clothes. <laughs> Uh, now, um, is that true that you're uh, planning a release and an album called uh, a Begrad Remix that is going to be like a remix of different songs? Uh, no, we've just put out a compilation. Yeah. Dance yeah, compilation. Yeah, there's um, five versions of like, techno compilations. Yeah. And you just have a, a, a contribution with Chemical Brothers, right? For a, for a song. How was the experience to working with them? I didn't work with them. It was very kind of we like spontaneous, really. We were really. quite lucky. Yeah, yeah. We were really good to work with. And we turned up the pub gig and the ideas. Mm. And between the end of the, by the end of the day, we had a good song on our hands. I think they were very patient with us, which was good. 
and we, <laughs> we're we're very, really nice guys and we just kind of turned up and did, did the track within the day really in I, in I um, just uh, read about that you start supporting a campaign that the God Save the Queen, the Sex Pistols, go number one again. I know. But what could be the, the most important thing that you admire about Sex Pistols? Just the idea, really, just I think. The idea, it's just like everything that's gone into the Sex Pistols, the story of the Sex Pistols, how they were made music, and then the big plan, you know, we started thinking about that, and we had to sort of put, put thought and everything and put it together and get it out there, but it was just not happening until that band was really strong. Okay, and now, um, are you preparing already the what is going to be the new album of, of Claxons? Preparing mentally for it. Mentally. Just mentally. Yeah. yeah. No, so, so you don't have like any any song or any like the lyrics or the music? It's like mental exercise at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's out there. It's like the first one. It's there somewhere. You just got to kind of right. grab it. You just got to get in the right frame of mind, and then you can get it. But it's that's true that it's gonna be called cool, uh, "Meets of the Near Past." No, no it's not. It's really that. no. Someone else, we can. This journalist from the BBC was convinced that we'd already written, written and recorded a second album called "Miss the Near Future." They call it Remember the Future. <laughs> it's nice. It's, but ne Nectar actually made now, I'm called Remember the Future, but I think we should steal that. Yeah. Now, um, also you did uh, different kind of covers. It's not over yet of Grace. Uh, but the Justin Timberlake, my love, who came with the idea of choosing that song as a cover? We all just loved it. You know, it's just a massive tune. I remember hearing it in, in America. We were in New York when it, we heard it in a taxi. And it was just, you know, it just sounds like it's from another planet. It just, the kind of silky, silkiness it had to it is just phenomenal. And um, I think we... <laughs> now, another thing that is, that I, that I really imagine that is really important in Claxons is to have fun on stage. It only on stage. And on stage too. Off stage, on stage full time fun. How hard is sometimes when you're so successful that you have to be traveling all around the world doing a lot of shows to, to have time to enjoy? I wouldn't ever go as far as saying it's been hard for a single second. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, right. I think it would be insulting to other people that want to be in bands and say that they're not going to be doing nothing enjoyable. You know, we've, we've got a duty to thoroughly enjoy ourselves and play every show that we get to do to enjoy it. What's the worst thing that can happen is you can feel a bit tired, that's it. And yeah. everyone gets tired, that's it. You feel a little bit sleepy, that's it. You can take a nap and do okay. <laughs> Like this, even this, this is quite fun. I mean, it's great. We're just having a chat, and you know, we're being filmed. It's quite. I mean, like, it's not hard. Now, how weird is to come to a country that they speak a totally different language, and they just boom with your music and know your lyrics. We have an internal translator. James, <laughs> James can speak Spanish, so we've been really? very fortunate. Yeah. That's yeah. Nice tell, tell me, tell me something that you learn in Spanish. Uh, Some to all of your fans. Like things like queba. That's a good one. Queba. Sorpresa. Sorpresa, yeah. and stuff like that. Just like, um, te quiero, you, just the important things. I love you, we love you. That's, the, that's what they like. Os, os queremos. Yeah. Where do you learn I, I used to live in Madrid. Oh, really? Yeah. What, what, what is the most important thing that you like about Latin culture? Like, I, I, I really, I think they're just a, a, always, from Latin people are very passionate about a lot of things. I think that's really, really good. I think ever, people believe in things and people are really expressive, I think, and they're kind of... Um, like honest like that, I, I really like that quality. And now, uh, what, what's after, after these uh, shows in Mexico, what are you going to do after? To Japan. That's an awesome experience. Yeah, it'll be our third time then, a third time to Japan, so, you know. We're touring band until December, we're going to start bringing out the records next year. I think that uh, beside the music and, and the records and everything, as a human being, it's a great experience to have the opportunity to know all that different cultures. Honestly, go, go out there, start a band, do it. It's like, yeah. It's the best thing that's ever happened to any of us, you know, having the time like that. Now, what's your opinion about this new generation of independence bands that start uh, letting know the music of because of the internet, because of MySpace, because of all these kind of tools? 